My next guest is beloved six-time nominated two-time Emmy-winning actress, best known for her role on one of the funny, as one of the funniest moms ever on TV, Claire Dunphy, on the show that I could not miss, Modern Family. Julie Bowen now has a podcast called Quitters, where she recently revealed for the first time that she struggled with an eating disorder as a teenager. And while we were watching her on television, she was struggling with her body. Shaming words from the public directed at her. Today, for the first time on TV, Julie is sharing her journey towards self-love. Please welcome to the TAMFAM Emmy Award winner, Julie Bowen! <laughs> Hello! Hello. Uh, welcome, darling. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Thank, okay. you so thank, you. thank you, thank you. Talk about our sons and all I these great know. things. Well, you've had a lot of transformations lately that you've been talking about. <laughs> um, well, we had that we had the pandemic, so we all had to we all had to scramble. We all we had, had to, to scramble. We had to figure out something to do with our time. So <laughs> we definitely yeah. did. So well, I started a podcast. Yeah. I started a, a line for uh, skin and body care for boys and tweens. Yeah. That kind of that jam because nobody nobody addresses it. And I love that you've done it. And we're going to talk about. It. I, I though was blown away by, well, first of all, when you're doing a podcast, it's yeah. so intimate. And before really you know is. it, you start talking about things and revealing things about yourself yeah. and talking to your guests that you never imagined. Uh -huh. I saw the headline, someone brought it to me, that you had opened up about an eating disorder as a oh, teenager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I was so surprised that it, um, to me, it's always been part of my, my sort of personal story. I never thought it was a big deal. Uh, to share, but I realized that when you're on a podcast and you're trying to get guests to open up to you, yeah. you got to get vulnerable. I'm sure you've said things here that made you feel... I tell people, fair exchange, no robbery. If you're telling me <laughs> exactly. your stuff and I'm not telling you mine, right. it's not fair. I got to right. open up. So, yeah, no, I struggled with an eating disorder for years, and um, God bless my parents got me all the best help in the whole world, and, you know, it just... It was a, it was just a long journey. Do you know what I mean now you've had you have your adult eyes yeah. to look back at that teenage mm -hmm. girl's journey. Yeah. What set the chain she's off? She's cute. She's adorable. See, she's and so still cute. Is. And still she is. She is so cute. She just climbed a mountain right there. I hope she <laughs> feels good. Um, do I know what set it off? You know, it's funny cuz we I have three sons and they're all so different, but I see one of them is is very similar to me and I see him always trying to color inside the lines and get the A plus. And um, I think I interpreted uh, being being messy or making mistakes or having an ass or like, you know, a little fat coming out of the top of your jeans or something is somehow a symbol of um, that you couldn't contain yourself, that you were, you were too much. Mm -hmm. And that to be good meant staying inside the lines, literally and figuratively, keeping it tight keeping everything tight. And my that's my attitude was tight. Right. And by the way, that is not fun. It's not a fun way to live. Certainly not for a teenager. No, so you're no, living I was this not fun. way and you're living in the lines. Yeah. And then the lines to the, the, the stress of trying to stay perfect. Yeah. Fit into that. Yeah. Sends your body these messages of not being yeah. good enough, mm -hmm. needing to be thinner. And as I understand, it spiraled so far that you ended up having to go to a facility to get help. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I just talked to my kids about this the other day and they're like, says what? You, wait, you never told them? Well, they just, it's not like something, you don't sit down and tell your kids like, let me tell you all the weird things that happened to mom. Well, that's funny you, you say know what that. I mean? Because Julie, we did a show on how much of your past right. should you tell your children? Just, and that's interesting. Well, I just, they're old enough now. Like, I don't think I would talk about this in public at all if they weren't old enough yeah, to kind of digest it and now. know yeah. it and understand that their mom's okay. Like, I'm okay. Yeah. I'm not going to, like, suddenly wig out and go crazy. Um, and also, it's really important in the, in the whole conversation around puberty. I think a lot of what I was struggling with was puberty oh, wow. and hormones and not feeling, not liking that feeling of changing. And I love, I mean, your guests, Ron, I just love that in general these days, people just talk about it. Yeah. They talk about their bodies. They talk about it changing. My boys aren't afraid. They know what a period is. Yeah. They know what go happens to girls. They're supposed to know. Right. But when I was growing up. Oh, no. In the Middle Ages. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I walked to school uphill in the snow both ways. Right. Um, 
they, they, we didn't talk about anything and it just sort of felt like, uh, dirty. And I realized if you're really, when you're really starving, you don't have any feelings. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. The body goes, we don't have time for that. So it was a, I think it was a coping mechanism. And so I think it's- How did a, it impact you later though in life? Because then you end up, you know, we are still, mm -hmm. are, I see myself in the mirror pretty much every morning when they're doing my makeup. I still see seven year old Tamron. Mm -hmm. I see the kid who wondered why I didn't have a dad at home, oh. wondered all of these, I still see her every time I look in the mirror. Um, and sometimes I laugh and go, look at you seven year old Tamron. And then other days I cry for that kid. Yeah. Because I know how lonely I felt mm -hmm. as well. So you're still the kid. You who still beat that, always that, that kid. Who dealt with that eating disorder. So then you become a star. Mm. And everything you do outside of the work is oh. measured, including your body, including how your body looks, including how the dress looked on your body. How did how did you deal with keeping that from triggering? Well, healthy? I was really good about I was lucky enough to kind of get a little bit of fame, a recognition before. There were, everybody had a cell phone in their pocket, right. a camera all the time. The life before 2008 yeah. when Twitter came around. And all yeah. of a sudden it was, ugh. And that was exactly, I had my, my twins in 2009 yeah. and I was in Hawaii. Um, we were shooting Modern Family and I had just, it was only, gosh, it was less than a year later. And I still had like the baby gunk. Oh, that's a cute picture. <laughs> You, there's no bad picture of you, <laughs> let me tell you. But you're, you just had your babies. But I, I'd had my babies like nine months yeah, before, yeah. and I was working, I was breastfeeding, and I jumped in the ocean uh, with my husband at the time wearing a bikini. No one was around. And by the time we got up to the room, there had been paparazzi like in rocks hidden away. And it was the nastiest, like, what is wrong with her? This is disgusting, people circling my belly and my boobs, and like, this, this is nasty. And I was like, okay. I mean, I felt this like, like I'd done something wrong. Like somebody took a picture of you in your most private moment. Right. And these people who are saying this don't know what you survived as a and teen have, in that doubt. They and have they, no idea. Yeah, they have no idea, and they have no idea that my body is just amazing. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sometimes I, we get impassioned when we're talking. Let me tell you, as a woman who had a C-section, <laughs> I sign off on that. My body did something freaking amazing. Freaking amazing. We're going to uh, edit out that word, come back more with a passionate, <laughs> freaking amazing Julie Bowen after the break. <laughs> I'm so We are back with Emmy Award-winning actress Julie Bowen. And so you, you are so busy. I mean, you, the boys, you have three now, the I twins. Three I got 13, 13, and 15. Gustav. Got there, that's Gus and John, John and John Oliver, Oliver, and that was young. So well, I, I love when I heard, as a mom boy myself, I have my son Moses. I, you didn't realize I have a, I'm 52 with a three-year-old. And when there he is, that was his first day of school. Oh my God. That was first day of school this year. Um, I was so happy that you were addressing something that people don't talk about a lot. Right. Well, boys, I mean, I was talking about puberty is tough. Yes. And when you start getting near it, you start heading into it like nine and stuff like where there's like little like mumps on the skin. And boys, the most important thing is boys start going in the bathroom and they close the door and that's it. You yeah. don't go in there anymore. Moses will no, close No, no, he does it now. My, he does? My, my, my boy goes to two, number two. He goes, mom, go that way. Go that way. He kicks me out, and the next thing I see, he's out of the bathroom. I'm like, I don't know what happened in there, but I have to go in there. Right, and how was the cleanup on and aisle And the cleanup six? was uh, not good right. on aisle Moses. Right, exactly, and that's, but as they get older, and so, then they, you are not allowed in that bathroom yeah. at all. And so my kids are going in there and coming out. I don't know what products they're using, yeah. and they're coming out dirtier than they went in. <laughs> and so we decided, my friend Jill Byron, she's the other JB of Yeah, so JB you created Scrub. JB Scrub. Right, we came up with this line for boys and, and young people in general. Right. Um, so it's you. face lotion, body yeah. wash. Face toner pads. Um, because we talk hygiene with girls now more than we did when we were kids. But, but girls, boys are left out. They're left out right. and they're left out of the conversation. They think that they're supposed to know what to do. We just are like, just use whatever's in the bathroom. Yeah. They don't know what to do with the That's stuff in true. the bathroom. 
No, they do not know what to do. My oh, kids well, you know how we know they don't yeah. know? Because we meet men later who didn't learn. That's right. So they give, they put a little uh, shampoo on their yeah. hair and it rinses down yeah. and they're hoping it's like sliding down the <laughs> and like maybe getting into their feet right. if you're lucky. And I'm like, Oh, we missed a lot of A lot of spaces guns. in between. There are so many other yeah. spaces. And these kids deserve to be spoken to, they, like, in a straightforward, not In a straightforward way. Well, listen, I want you to take a look at the screen, because three of your biggest fans, your sons, have sent a video. Take a look. Today, we'll be re reviewing the items in my mom's bathroom. Oh, this is going to be fancy hair stuff. Face shielding setting what? spray. Setting spray. <laughs> <laughs> this thing, it's like a little weapon. It's natural mineral water. Oh, it's just water? Is water a baby problem? Water and <laughs> nitrogen. Oh, that's hair stuff. That's like a big tub of toothpaste. Yeah, it looks like a big... It looks like toothpaste. Wrinkle. Just so, you, okay, so they don't look old. Anti-aging. This one I can, can never figure out. It's a rock. A green rock. It's a cool rock. It's like... It's a shake. <laughs> For our last product, tub of paintbrushes. Why, why, why does one need so many paintbrushes? You have to use every single paintbrush. You can do it. Olive oil. <laughs> I love it. They, they don't have, have a clue. Why does mom need so many makeup brushes? Why, said. And, but why do you, you, we're going to let those people loose in the bathroom to get clean? <laughs> they were throwing things at each yeah, other. Yeah. And like, don't throw the rock. Like, we need to talk to those people where they are <laughs> in a straightforward manner, yeah. and it says on the back, and I can, I, I can say these words on, on live television, okay. so breathe. But it says it on the back of, all, of, of the body wash in particular. It says pits, nuts, butts, in that order. Pits, nuts. And you can you say can that? Say all, can you say all those? We can say those words. Well, it's out there the now. The audience says we can. <laughs> yes. pits, the people nuts, have spoken. Butts. I love it. <laughs> I, I, listen, I am happy the product is there. I cannot wait to start introducing my little boy whose sneakers are already starting to... Oh, yeah. But, I mean, girls that get these, like, 12-step Oh, no, they used to they teach hygiene. It? When I was in high school, they taught girls hygiene in school. And that not... And boys did what? Boys got... Go to recess. So now we get to teach them all. Oh, and wow, Because we yes. all need it. Well, thank you. Thank are you. are so freaking awesome. I love you. <laughs> Emmy Award-winning actress Julie Bowen. Super mom looking out for the rest of us.